Welcome. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the more commonly used humanitarian market assessment tools. While there may be other tools used in development context or longer term programming, such as value chain analysis tools, this video is focused primarily on the market assessment tools used in humanitarian programming. There are already many market tools that are commonly used by different organizations and practitioners, and more are still being developed. But how do you choose a tool? Different market tools are suited to different phases of a response, so not all tools are appropriate for every context. You need to be familiar with various tools and their uses in order to decide which is right for your work. Let's take a look at some tools in a bit more detail. The Minimum Standard for Market Analysis, or MISMA, was originally developed by CALP in 2013 and was updated in 2018. The MISMA, which is part of the Humanitarian Standards Partnership, guides the work of humanitarian practitioners across sectors to ensure that, irrespective of the tool used, key standard of market analysis is being met. The standard has five key actions, which represent a way to broadly think through market assessment and analysis. These actions can be linked to the humanitarian project cycle, and it is useful to think at what phases these actions might occur. Still, we should remember that this is an iterative process, and we want the analysis itself in the evolving market situation, not rigid linear instructions, to guide market assessment and, and analysis efforts to inform the shape of a response. Key Action 1. Scope. Define the analytical and geographic scope of the assessment. This is important. You'll need to understand which markets you are including at a city, regional, or national level before you begin, as well as defining which critical markets or commodities the assessment needs to include. Depending on whether you are doing a rapid assessment at the beginning of a crisis or a more in-depth assessment in a protracted crisis, you'll need to ensure that the scope of the assessment is clear. Key action two, market analysis team. Build a competent and knowledgeable data collection and analysis team, including people with expertise in particular sectors and ideally in program operations. Key action three, data collection. Use data collection methods and information sources of sufficient quality. Building your team and collecting data often happens during the assessment phase of the project cycle. Key action four, analysis. Next, you'll need to conduct market analysis to adequately inform program design and establish or affirm program objectives. Key action five, market monitoring. Use market monitoring data to review your assessment findings and enable program adaptations when needed. Now that we have a better idea about how this standard can support quality, and what the key steps and actions are likely to be, regardless of context, let's start to talk about the actual tools, guidance, and methods that are available to support market assessment and analysis. In 2017, UNHCR published a multi-sector market assessment companion guide and toolkit. The multi-cluster sector initial rapid assessment put together by the IASC in 2012 is another explicitly multi-sectoral tool. Assessments like the MIRA can be adapted to collect information on needs and markets at the same time. Rapid market assessment tools have been designed to be used within the first few days of a crisis and are especially suited to rapid onset crises, such as a natural disaster. Many agencies have their own rapid assessment tools, but the RAM and the 48-hour tool are probably the most commonly used across the sector for rapid market assessments. The ICRC IFRC's Rapid Assessment for Markets, or RAM, was published in 2014, and it provides guidance plus tools, including survey instruments, for conducting a rapid market assessment, mostly focused on marketplace analysis. While developed by the Red Cross Red Crescent movement, other agencies have used this tool. For example, following Hurricane Haiyan in the Philippines in 2013, 
Goal used RAM to determine that they could do a cash transfer for shelter on the island of Leyte. Oxfam's 48-hour tool, actually called the Emergency Food Security and Livelihoods 48-hour Assessment Tool, includes a rapid assessment of markets. Like several tools we've discussed, while developed for food security, this could be adapted to be more multi-sectoral. Now, let's take a look at market systems assessments. Market mapping is in several of the tools and guidance documents as a way to visually represent a market system. One of the more popular tools following a sudden onset emergency is the Emergency Market Mapping and Analysis, or EMMA, toolkit. Published in 2010, it has since been used by dozens of humanitarian agencies. It is a labor-intensive process to use the tools, and typically it takes four, two to four weeks to conduct a complete EMMA, making it best suited to examine the emergency soon, but not immediately after the shock. Similarly, it may not be suitable for times and places with very high volatility in how the market is behaving. However, it has been used many times, and it may be one of the better known toolkits. For a recent example, in 2016, CRS funded by USAID completed an EMMA on the corrugated iron sheeting market in Haiti to look at market-based shelter responses following Hurricane Matthew in October of 2015. However, to improve preparedness, a similar process and guidance was developed called Pre-Crisis Market Analysis, a step-by-step -step guide for practitioners explaining how to use similar market system analysis methods to integrate into early warning systems, contingency planning, and other preparedness exercises and systems. This has become an increasingly common and popular approach. In 2016, in advance of the counteroffensive to recapture Mosul from ISIS in northern Iraq, IRC, UNDP, and Oxfam completed a PCMA report on wheat flour, drinking water, and credit anticipating that there would likely be humanitarian needs related to the conflict later that year. There are a wide variety of specialized guidance and tools for particularly complicated market systems. Due to its centrality to livelihoods or cash for work or cash for assets projects, WFP, Mercy Corps, and others have produced guidance on labor market analysis. Much of this was reviewed and recently compiled by Save the Children, Mercy Corps, and IRC, who collaboratively produced a labor market analysis in humanitarian context, a practitioner's guide to assist. Note that this is a guidance, not a toolkit. As they are an integral component of recovery for many rural agricultural livelihoods, CRS, in collaboration with SIAT, PABRA, USAID, and the University of East Anglia have developed a set of tools on seed security, including how to analyze seed markets. The seed system security assessment has some specific tools that can be helpful in specific contexts or programs. Similarly, as gender is such an integral part of how many organizations operate, Oxfam created the Gender Enterprise Market Plus Toolkit, GEM Plus Toolkit, to help practitioners who need to better understand how gender dynamics operate within the market and how to design effective interventions with this knowledge. Many of these specialized tools are linked to recovery. Now, let's look at tools which are really focused on the analytical questions and supporting particular types of market analysis. The WFP Market Analysis Framework was published in 2011, and it provides access to guidance or tools for conducting several different types of market analysis. It helps find tools for the type of analysis you want to do based on what key analytical question you are trying to answer, along with what, at what level you want to look at the market, whether that be in a local area, across a country, or if there is a need to understand how global markets affect local ones. Probably the most popular tool within this framework is the WFP VAM Market Analysis Tool, Market Integration, 
which explains how to use information from historical price data and from interviewing traders to assess how integrated markets are with each other. As integrated markets are key for much decision-making around cash and voucher programs, this is a popular tool. WFP also produced the very popular annex on how to conduct a trader survey as part of this tool. The market analysis framework links to many WFP produced tools and provides links to tools developed by other agencies that were available in 2011. Similarly, IRC's market information framework in a first draft became available to practitioners in 2017. This framework aims to standardize key analytical questions that need to be asked of markets at different phases of the project cycle. Then it links to information one could collect to make evidence-based decisions regarding the key analytical questions. It does not provide guidance on how to collect or analyze that information, but rather seeks to encourage better market analysis and use of market data within the humanitarian community of practice. The Market Analysis Guidance by IFRC-ICRC was published in 2014 on behalf of the Red Cross Red Crescent Movement. It is a comprehensive resource for helping integrate market analysis into your programs and ways of working. It covers all aspects of the project cycle, including organizing market assessments and monitoring markets. While not as comprehensive and covering the whole project cycle, market Price Monitoring Analysis and Response Kit by CRS provides tools for price monitoring, analyzing price information, and using this analysis to make programmatic decisions. Lastly, an older tool, the Market Information and Food Insecurity Response Analysis, was developed by several academics at Cornell and Tufts Universities and CARE in 2007 to use market assessment information, including information on price analysis to make a response choice, that is, to conduct a response analysis. It has been used less than some of the other tools over time, largely since it is typically used by professional economists. Most of these tools can be found on CALP's website, and there are often webinars on market tools advertised via discussion groups, both on CALP's dgroup and the Markets in Crisis dgroup. It's important to remember there is no best tool each tool has its pros and cons. Some tools will work better for particular contexts or programs than others. CALP's comparative table of market tools is a good checklist to start with to help you understand which tools might be best use in a particular context. Thank you for listening.